live from Austin, Texas. It's the Cube, covering KubeCon and Cloud Native Con 2017. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Linux Foundation, and the Cube's ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Live here in Austin, Texas, the Cube's exclusive coverage of Cloud Native Con and KubeCon, which stands for Kubernetes Conference, not the Cube. CUB, that's us. <laughs> I'm John Furrier with Matt Broberg, co-host of the Stu Miniman podcast for himself. And we also have a special podcaster here on theCUBE, Dana Salinas, who's the host of the Women Tech Show, at Tech Women Show on Twitter. Um, also a software engineer at Microsoft. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's this is kind of like a podcast, we're like live though, we're streaming. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> love your sweater, that's a binary tree, holiday tree. Binary Christmas tree. A binary Christmas tree. <laughs> so perfect. I'm going to do a quick sort quickly, no, I'm only kidding. Yeah. Um, so question for you, you've got a great program, you've got a desk over there, you do some interviews here. Yeah. Great to see you here doing the Women in Tech. We've done a lot of Women in Tech interviews on theCUBE, love to showcase women programming, women developers, women STEM. Um, great that you're doing so, congratulations. So tell us, what's the vibe like? Are you, people excited to do podcasting? Is it all women? Do you interview men? Um, yes. So tell us a little bit about the show. That's a good question. The motivation of the show is to have technical women talk about what they're working on, the products they're building, or business strategy, instead of what does it feel like to be a woman in tech, or the only woman in the meeting room. Those conversations are valid, but I think we've we've heard a lot of those, and I, the community can benefit if they're just listening yeah. to what they're working on. It's great to get the education out of this. So I have a question for you, I love to ask this, but I never really had a uh, talk about software engineering on theCUBE. Um, what's the style difference in coding? Do that talked about, are women, do they code differently? Is it uh, probably neater, cleaner? Is there biases in coding in that come into, because, I'm not aware of <laughs> differences like that, but you know, you, you could find that out if you run a script on the GitHub projects, yeah. but I, I don't think it affects. But people don't, they don't talk about that though, do they? They don't talk about that, and I certainly haven't experienced anything like that, yeah. and then I learned from my coworkers, and they learned from yeah. me. And now what are you working on at Microsoft? I am in Microsoft Research earlier this year, so what I work on is adding AI features to our existing products, yeah. like Outlook and Dynamics. So, yeah. And I want to switch gears and talk about okay. the podcast a little bit. So I'm yeah. curious, what was your inspiration to start it? And had you done podcasts before, or did it just feel right, like this is the time to yeah. do something? I hadn't done a podcast before, but I had listened to a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. And the initial motivation of this is, at Microsoft where I work, they, they have this Meet Our Leaders series, where they bring men and women in our leadership position. The audience is mostly women, and I was tuning in there by Skype, and there's 200 people listening to them, plus the people in the room, mm -hmm. and they're asking questions about what's our business strategy or technical questions, so I'm like, women want to know about these things. And then, in addition to that, I noticed yeah. some women, technical women, they list on their website. I love giving talks, just not the diversity talk or the lady panel. Like I've given it several times. I just want to talk yeah. about cloud computing or the things yeah. that I work on. And then I looked if somebody was doing this already, a show like this. I didn't find it, so I started it. Yeah. And it helped that I listened to other shows. I mean, I've, I find when I talk to a lot of my um, uh, women friends that are technical, sometimes CTOs and higher, and even down programming, they don't want to, they just want to talk about what they're working on. Yeah, they exactly. They don't want to be the, that woman in tech on the panel. I mean, I've had a friend say to me privately over the weekend at a party, I don't, sick and tired of being called up and saying, I need a woman on a panel. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like a backlash, but they also feel obligated to do it. Yeah. It's kind of that new culture developing. Yeah. Talk about that and, and, and uh, what that kind of conversation is like that in your yeah. world. Well, what I've heard, uh, for example, Sheryl Sandberg, I think, has said, there we will reach a point someday where we won't be called a female CEO or a women engineer. It would just be engineers. So that's our goal, to just lose yeah. that label at someday. Right now, the show has the label because I'm raising awareness of having them talk about technical topics. Yeah. As, I mean, more, as more people hear about them, it's, it's just going to be natural and normal. Like, 
Sure, I learned from Nicole about Kubernetes, and then yeah. men are also listening to the show, which I think benefits a lot the community. I have two daughters. Uh, they're in ones in high school, ones in college, ones at Cal, and you know they're they're techies. They're they're science. They like science, not coding yeah. yet. Their mom doesn't want them to be like me, code, but um, so they're, but they're, Just give them the but, choice. I said, hey, do you do CUBE interviews? It's also an option. Yeah. Um, but, but you know, in their culture, when I asked them about this, they're like, we don't think about it. So there's, a, at their level, they're all in school together, and it's interesting, I think a time is coming now where the awareness is putting the, the old guard pressures yeah. away and put in the clock. There's still some bad behavior out there, no doubt about it. I see it every day and when it's being called out, thank God, but now it's just like, you're a person in tech. Exactly. I think, so I think respect is the number one, respect for the individual is something that we always preach. Yeah. Independent of who the person is, male, yes. female, whatever. Yeah, exactly. And we will reach that point soon, I hope. Yeah. So, where <laughs> so. we lose the label. Yeah. So you're 77 episodes in, I'm also a listener. I, yeah. I learn a ton from it. You have brilliant people on every week. I yeah. really admire you for that because I know how hard it is to produce a podcast. So yeah. what are some of the things you didn't know before starting a podcast that like, oh wow, that takes more energy than it looked like at the time? That's a good point, yes. The very first few interviews that I did, I didn't take into account how the guest would respond. So when I prepare the questions in advance, and then I would think this is going to be a two minute answer, but the person just ended up saying yes, no, or uh, <laughs> sure, that's a big problem. And I was counting on it to be more, so I needed to prepare if in that aspect, and what helps is just, if they've already given talks, just look, look them up on YouTube or find other interviews they've done, just to get a sense of how they talk. There's also people that tend to give super long answers, yeah. and uh, you need to prepare for that. That's how how you're going to handle handle it, yeah. I noticed you but, had someone from Vietnam, he came by recently. Yeah. Is that Erica? Erica Brescia came on the show a few months ago. Okay. the COO of Vietnam. And uh, in that episode, we focused a lot of entrepreneurship. She came out of YC, so yeah. sort of building Vietnam to where yeah. it is. And today I interviewed the engineering manager of Binami, and she talked about Kube apps and all these security aspects, so. What are some of the innovations you're seeing in, uh, in your interviews? Can you highlight some examples recently that jump out at you that, that are, that are um, a lot of innovation coming from these ladies, and what, what are some of the things that they've done? Shine the light on some of the awesome highlights from, oh, from yeah. your guests. Yeah, one of my favorite ones is Rachel Thomas. She works at fast.ai, what she, works on is bias in machine learning. So machine learning is about learning from your data. But I've, I've heard you know, this woman at a conference bring it up like, if I'm a minority, I'm a minority in the data. Like, so you need to take that into account. So there's a lot of people working in this space. That, that was a really cool project. Data-driven analysis. Yeah, but sort of considering that bias that can be in that data, and make sure your, your data is better. So for example, it's a known fact that there's a lot of men in the technology field, so if you're going to get job recommendations, if, if a person like me, Mexican, I, I studied computer science, but if I'm a minority in the data set, maybe I'm not going to get that recommendation. I'm not saying that's how it works, but that could potentially it's a be a statistical fact. Yeah, but if you don't take that into account in your system, Maybe women are not getting job recommendations of openings. So, that's a good point. So it no, brings brings up. That's a really powerful observation, right? Yeah. Uh, and I was curious, as a software engineer, software engineering is your craft, and yeah. podcasting is your hobby. How has podcasting influenced your software engineering skills? Because ultimately, like that's the path you're going down career-wise. Yeah. Well, a big part of software engineering is about talking to your team and going to meetings, talking about solutions. Podcasting has helped me a lot improve my soft skills, and for a period of time I was editing my own shows. Oh, yeah. One thing that I noticed is when I was talking to my guests, I'm listening to my recording, when I would say an idea, I would tend to lower my voice. So I noticed that, and then I said to myself, I'm probably doing this in the meetings at work, and then 
what I an worked. amazing insight, right? Like that now was... you're seeing how you're presenting yourself in front of other people in technical ways, exactly. and then you get to bring that into your yeah. work. Yeah, whenever I would say an idea, I would just be like, uh, what happens if we do this instead? And yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I was like, I have to It's a great example of self-awareness, right? I mean, yeah. everyone should do that. Listen to their, their look at their actions. Yes, so it, it helps with the soft skills, and also it helps if you're working in a certain area of software engineering and you want to find out more about it, you can decide to do more shows on that and just share that with the community that women well, are working on It's this. great to see you have some CUBE alumni like Erica on. We interviewed her on the CUBE at Google Next a few years ago. Um, share some um, coordinates. When does the show go out? When do you record it? Does it shift on a regular cadence? Okay. Share a little uh, yes. information. Yes, the show, is released weekly. I publish Monday evenings, but I share it on social media on Tuesday mornings. So if you're subscribed, you would get it Monday evenings. So good, yeah. good for the week, We're running on the bike, yeah. in the car. It's 30 minutes. Any video podcasting coming? I don't no. have any video. <laughs> no. A lot more editing required. <laughs> yeah. Trust me on that one. Yeah. Um, cool, what, what's the uh, most exciting thing that you're working on right now? You get the podcast, which is super cool, hobby. Um, great to get those voices out there. Yeah. So congratulations, but at work, what are you working on? Yes, well like I mentioned earlier, I work on a team, it's a, Team under Microsoft Research, a lot of it, we don't know what people working on there, but my team works closely with product teams. So we're adding AI features to Outlook and Dynamic CRM, just to increase the productivity aspect in this sense. So you bring in applied R&D to the product yeah. groups, mostly AI? Yes, yeah. What's the coolest thing in AI that you like? Oh wow, well I, I really like you know recommendation systems and things like that, cool. yeah. All right, well thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. The Tech Women podcast here. They got a booth over there going great interviews. Here at theCUBE, we're doing our share. Two days, the second day of live wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We'll be right back with more live coverage in Austin, Texas. You hear the music. This is the, the big D, Texas here in Austin, Texas. More live coverage, that's Dallas. That's what, we're in Austin. We'll be right back with more live coverage after this short break.